Read, read, read. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Ready? Yeah. You ready for this? Yeah, I guess. Did so. you put mine a little higher so I'd look taller? That's nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Hello, world. <laughs> Oh gosh. I'm here with Jarnob. Oh god. Is that your given name? Uh Christian given name, yes. Ah, uh, right, 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 right. Not Mahatma. No, 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 no. <laughs> Close though. Close, um, though. welcome to the podcast. Awesome. The I'm Reed Fletcher to, Podcast. Glad to be here in my own home. <laughs> yeah. There is uh no specific theme. No agenda. No agenda. You're not going to try and get all the nitty gritty secrets out of me. Um, actually, that... what are you doing this summer? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do this again. We're going to do this again. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, I, I am glad to have you on the podcast. It, it's exciting. It's been, it's interesting. The, the funnest thing to me is that it always goes in like a way different direction than I'm assuming. Mm. You know, like I'll have someone on there. Like, for example, your band. And we'll start talking about your band and then Gross. it'll end up in like a really weird direction. Kid, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> it always ends up with a weird direction really, with you. <laughs> it is always a weird direction. Coming from a weird direction and going into a weird direction. Mm -hmm. How's your press? Um, This is uh, seltzer, lime lemongrass. It's pretty good. I respect it. I don't like it. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't expect you to. <laughs> um... We were talking earlier, mm -hmm. you were telling me a little bit about um, all those logistics <clears throat> mm -hmm. that go into being in a band. Mm -hmm. Have you been in a band before? Before this one? So you remember uh, Kyle and Jordan? Yeah. Kyle Duckworth, Jordan Tippett, and Jansen. Yeah. So we had a band back in high school uh, called Dark White. <laughs> really? Yeah, we had a band in high school and... We just did like some covers and stuff. I think we covered like Linkin Park. We covered Jimmy World. What did they play? We covered uh, Flowbots. Remember that Handlebars song? Uh, I played guitar and sang. Jordan played bass because we didn't know what else to do with them. <laughs> no, he, he, he normally played guitar, but we already had two guitarists. So throw them on bass. Right. And uh, Jansen played drums because... He kills it at drums. He was on the American Fork High School marching band. Yeah. Who's like top in the nation. So he I killed it. I think he did uh, UVU as well. He was on the mar the that drum line. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And they're one of the best too. They like have the green guys that go out and stuff. So that was really cool. And then Kyle. <laughs> Kyle would play keyboards or ukulele or like they're like <laughs> yeah he would just do funny <laughs> stuff so Kyle did that and uh his brother Tyler played guitar as well so we just we just kind of had fun you know we never did anything serious every time we would try and write a song it was always just like mayhem <laughs> like never worked out uh-huh and have I, gigs no like we played one, so you can look it up on, if you look up on YouTube, all one word, I love tofu sausages. I think it's like Kyle or Jordan or someone's uh, YouTube page. Uh-huh. And it's got videos of them playing like cops and robbers or bad boys, bad, like just stupid stuff you yeah. did when you were in like junior high. Uh-huh. But they have a video of us playing at a uh, award talent show. Really? <laughs> yeah. Someday that video is going to be like, I saw them at this award talent show. Dude, I'm telling you. <laughs> I uh, I actually had a band as well. Did you really? Uh, kind Did of. Did you play piano or what? No, it wasn't really a band. It was more like a, a vocal Oh, um, God, don't tell me it was acapella. I'll slap you right now. You might have to. <laughs> it wasn't, I mean, it was acapella, but only for the fact that we didn't have any instruments. <laughs> we not were, on purpose. No, it was, it was just... not intentionally. I know I was a little kid. I should, probably should have said that in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Me and my brother, we wrote all these songs. Which one? Michael. Okay. And so, like, <laughs> we were always just playing. Did I start recording? I don't know. <laughs> right? Yeah, I started recording. Okay, cool. Well, we're good. We're oh, live. We're live. We didn't miss that bit. Hey, Joe Rogan. Okay. <laughs> um, no, you're good. 
okay, so I'll just cut that part out. So I'll just try and be like as fluid as I, as I was just saying. Mm-hmm. And then me and my brother, um, yeah, we had a, we had a band. It was just me and him mm-hmm. and we just made up songs. We used to play the age of empires game. Yeah. You play yeah. That? Oh yeah. And you know how the monks can like go and they actually convert the guys from the other armies into your army. So we wrote a this song called monks of the middle age. <laughs> and also there's like a cheat code that can make your monk skinny. I don't know why really? that would be beneficial, but yeah, we like looked it up I online. I thought I knew all of the cheat codes. In <laughs> so we had this song that was like, we are the monks of the middle age. And then there was a special riff, which was like fit to fat to fit to fit to fat. Cause they get, you know, fit, fit and fat. To fat. That was our first big hit. Oh yeah. Um, moving on from that, you know, the early years, we, uh, we got a song called California Girl. Okay. Which was California girl, California girl. That was like the whole thing. Song. Just repeat, California girl. Gotta get the California girl. And at the end, I don't remember like the <clears throat> climax, but the end end was somehow it didn't work with the California girl and then it became Hawaiian girl. No. So uh, you could say I know a lot about music. And you, you could you, say that. You would say that. You'd be kind of right. Yeah, I've heard music. Sure. <laughs> I mean, you play a killer piano. I do play the piano. Yeah. But I, mean, I don't know if you practice anymore. You're probably not any good. No. These are just for typing now. Yeah, I figured as much. Uh, it's I the piano for me is like I most people that play instruments are very musically talented. And they can like they have a good ear or mm-hmm. they can they can write songs. Sure. But for me the piano is actually kind of like a it is like keyboards, like like the keyboard of a computer. I learned it in a very technical, technical kind of left way. brain. Is left brain the non-creative Who one? Who knows? Who cares? I don't have any viewers. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I can say whatever we want. <laughs> middle brain. <laughs> uh, yeah, middle brain. I think it's the frontal cortex cerebral lobe, um, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And so it was very much like, oh, I press this, I press this, I press this, I press this. And I loved it, but I don't really have like an ear. I don't write music. I just, it's super fun. I don't know. Yeah, that's good. Especially for something that's so left-brained. Yeah. To be expressed in such a right brain yeah. way, you know? Yeah, for sure. Did So you never like, I guess, did you ever like make your own stuff? Did you ever create music yourself or was it mostly just like playing stuff that you had learned just playing stuff that i'd learned yeah okay. that makes I mean, more sense i mean that makes sense if you were yeah. doing it in like a technical way i mean i'd like to yeah i'd like to and maybe i i don't even know if i have a talent for that i doubt it but i mean i tried when i was a kid and like i couldn't put the right chords together yeah. intentionally you yeah. know it's all it's a muscle to yeah. me it's yeah. muscle memory yeah. like typing on the computer because for me like i mean I took like some lessons on Mm -hmm. guitar and stuff when I was like, I don't know, maybe 13 or something. I think I took like three or four lessons. Mm -hmm. So I learned like some scales and like a couple chords. So like I know the main like chords, but any stuff I write now, like you ask me what it is and I have no idea what it is. I just like the way it sounds. And it kind of seems like most musicians are that way, you know? Like there's, well, I don't, I don't know, but I, I've noticed that some people that are very, very technical and like mm-hmm. really get it technically yeah. usually aren't the best musicians. Like they're the best technically. Yeah. Um, but it seems like they, you, you kind of hear more of the creative right, right side brand mm-hmm. people that come out with the new songs and like, oh yeah, I don't even know what I'm doing. I just like play yeah. and it sounds good. It feels yeah. good. Yeah, totally. But, I mean, there's something to be said about, like, knowing all the technical side of it. You know what I mean? Uh Like, I don't know, it's kind of this back and forth where it's, like, with the technical side, you know, I can know all of the, I can know every single note on the entire guitar Uh and, like, where to play all of the different crazy intricacies of it. Yeah. And some people like that can almost trap you. Yeah. To where it's like you're almost like caged in and mm-hmm. you don't have like that creative aspect. But people who are creative that do know that yeah. side of it, it just opens everything up. 
makes them even better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, so it's kind of like this weird balance. Like, I wish I was dedicated enough to really delve into all of that, but I'm just like, yeah, I just sing in a band now. So, well, it's, it's probably hard to motivate yourself to do that once you've kind of reached the level that you can express yourself. Yeah, totally. And totally. so you've already, you're like, I, I completely understand that. And that's kind of where I am with piano too. Like I can play the songs I want to play. I could put in a lot of discipline to really learn the piano and like be good, but that's but not. It's like, what is it worth to you? I know the, the difficulty to the reward. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, is that really worth it? You know? Yeah. And I mean, like in our band, we have, you know, two guitarists. Mm -hmm. They both write songs. I write songs. So it's like, there's not really a huge necessity for me to really be writing a ton because I already have those guys and that's like their main instrument in the band. Like I don't play guitar when we right. practice or when we play shows or you anything. You just sing. I just sing. Uh-huh. I know. So lame. You only sing. I know. <laughs> it's so stupid because like the front man of the band is supposed to be like, like the cool guy. The cool guy, but it's like face. you do the least work. Yeah, you know no, I mean? it's totally true. I mean, I try not to be that way though. Like I, I'm a part of, you know, the production of it, it all and in like the recording process. I like to be there for when even they're just, when we're just recording drums, like I like to be there for it. Mm -hmm. When we're just recording this or that or mixing or something like yeah. after this tonight, like at some point I'm probably going to be going over to wolf's house he's he's our guitarist and he lives in this apartment complex oh that's so nice I just walk over there yeah most of the time like pretty drunk so it's like nice yeah. i can just walk home uh -huh. um but uh like i'll go over there and i like to you know be his second ear to like listen to what he's doing and be like hey actually i like this or maybe we should put some more reverb on that or maybe we should cut this that you know and just kind of like be there in the whole process which i like to think is unique with some bands, because a lot of the times, like, the biggest gripe I hear from people playing in bands is that the singer is just a piece of shit who doesn't do anything. Right. Like Doesn't a, help load and unload the gear. Doesn't, like, have any process. They're just like, oh, yeah, I'm here to do like this. Like a figurehead thing. almost. Like, oh, yeah, I represent the band, but they work for me. Yeah, that's stupid. Yeah, no, that is stupid. Like, this is, like, the most exciting thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah. How did you get, how did you get into it? So... So I work at Guitar Center and I've worked there for like two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And for it's been that long already. I, know. I thought I was going to work there for like six months. I remember when you started working there, you told me about it. I was, was like, like, yeah, like... it's just going to be like, hold me over to the next thing. But I totally love it. Like yeah. people there. I mean, I've always loved music. Mm -hmm. I've been, you know, playing guitar for, you know, a decent amount of time. And I, I just like doing it and I like being around it and everyone there is into it. So yeah. I honestly, I never actually thought that I'd be able to like be in a legitimate band mm -hmm. just cause like, it's so tough to find all the people who play the different parts in it, Yeah, you know, and working there, you know, got to know a bunch of dudes and we all just got along really well as friends. Mm -hmm. So they work there? Yeah. All of them work there. Really? So well, that's well, like perfect. one of them got fired like two months ago, <laughs> but he was working there. And so like all of us, we just started talking, you know, all of us are into the same kind of music, like, mm -hmm. or at least similar music. And we all have like certain commonalities and stuff. So it really was, I don't know, it just kind of happened. Like we were talking one day and we we're like, Hey, we should start a band. Like, let's just jam, you know, yeah. let's just jam together. And we went over to Wolf's house one night after work had a couple beers and we all just kind of like recorded some, like, I was like, Hey, I got this riff. Let's do this. And like wrote a song with that. And then like Marcelo, the, one of the other guitarists, he's like, Hey, I got this, let's do this. And then Wolf, he did one. So we started out with like three songs and we're like, okay, cool. Like these sound sick. Like, hey, we're a band. And, and we're like, we're like, Hey, we can do this and this on it. And the other guy, he, so our bassist, Colin, he's actually in like a pretty big band. Like they're almost about to get signed with like Warner Bros. Really? Yeah. Like big time. Right. Dang. And um, so he's always played guitar with them. But 
I didn't know this beforehand, but he was like, yeah, I've always wanted to play bass. Always wanted to play bass. Which is funny because like in the band structure, like bassist is always kind of like the, like you're playing bass. Like yeah. it's like the not it kind of yeah, yeah. thing, you know uh -huh. what I mean? For sure. Um, it's like the forgotten guy. Yeah. Like just cause like most people who aren't into, most people who aren't musicians like don't really appreciate the bass for what it is. Mm -hmm. Like it holds everything together. It's like the glue for everything. Right. You know? It's like the rhythm with the drums and everything. Mm -hmm. So it it's a super crucial part. And I think you always wanted to be a you know that part to it. Yeah. And so it was really cool to like have him have that opportunity. And he actually really likes our music a ton and like what we're doing loves it you know so i don't know it, it's been really cool because it just kind of started we all talked about it and we're like yeah let's just do it and so mm -hmm. we started doing it and then we're like hey let's just practice and we'll start playing these songs you know um and i from there it just kind of took off and we i mean i think we probably have like 20 songs recorded really yeah recorded like what does that mean? Do you have so we, Spotify? Or do you have like, no, 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 no. These are just like recorded, recorded on, like on the computer. Like it's literally yeah. just recorded. Yeah, and we have the parts and stuff for it. Like if you wanted us to go practice right now and play album, we couldn't do it because we just like wrote them and then like right. didn't play them anymore. Because mm -hmm. like we're working on just like piece by piece. Right. You know. So like right now, we're working on our EP. Um, what's it was that an ep is just like a it's like a smaller album oh okay. so an lp is like a full-length album and mm -hmm. ep is like kind of smaller so like four or five six tracks so ours is like five songs mm -hmm. and um so that's what we're really working on right now we've recorded and re-recorded it like three or four times and mixed it who knows how many times yeah um just because we really really want it to sound the way we want it to right we don't want to just like rush it and get something out there and we're mm -hmm. doing all of it ourselves mm -hmm. we're not having any third party come in or going anywhere to record it we're using all of our own gear before we started this you know we were talking about how we've spent a ton of money on gear i didn't know? realize just how intense it is to start a band like yeah you were saying what like a couple of thousand bucks each just each to... probably i mean in in like i was saying like some of the guys like already had gear but like yeah even since we started like everyone bought new amps everyone bought new guitars mm -hmm. or several new guitars mm -hmm. and you know i bought i just showed you my microphones i use and you know there's just a lot that goes into it so we've all <laughs> you know Invested quite a bit of money and insane amount of time. Yeah. I've spent the last, I mean, we, so we got together maybe like September, August or something like that. And that's mm -hmm. when we started like recording stuff, then started like jamming a month later. And then you guys were there for our first show, which was what? Uh, October. October. Yeah. I think it was around Halloween. Yeah. It was like a dress up thing. Yeah. And so we got together for, you know, and played that show. And that was, I mean, that was the first time I ever performed in front of people that wasn't at a ward talent show. Really? So that was like your second time performing at all in front of people? Oh, yeah. Dang, that's awesome. Yeah. Are you nervous? I was super nervous. Like, so I wasn't nervous coming up to, like, leading up to it, the weeks leading up. And then, like, every once in a while, I'd get, like, a spurt of, like, <laughs> I was like, ooh, oh, crap. shoot, I don't oh, know. I don't know about this. Because it's, it's funny because it's this thing that like I've envisioned and kind of dreamed about mm -hmm. for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. Like listening to music and stuff. And I was just imagined myself up there and like yeah. doing it. But like at the same time, it's like, oh, shit, this is going to be the scariest thing I've ever done in yeah. my life. Yeah. So the day of, I was like. Oh man, I was like so nervous. I oh, couldn't yeah. think. I could like barely eat, you know. And Were you, then, do you get like hyper, like energetic when you get nervous? What um, people do different stuff? No, for me, I really just like shut up. I'm just quiet. Uh huh. And I was just like super serious. And everyone's like, dude, are you okay? And I'm just like, <laughs> your face is like, uh, why? Like, I'm fine. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't like smoke cigarettes, but like, can I have one? Cause like, I'm really kind of freaking out. Uh -huh. And, uh, so I smoked a cigarette and we we're just like hanging out. And then like, 
you got there to the show, my family got there, and like a bunch of friends. And as soon as like everyone was there, I was like, oh, these are just like my friends. Like, yeah. you know, like I don't need to worry about anything. Like these are just people who care about me and want to like see me do my thing. Right. So I was like, after that, like once everyone was there, I was like, totally cool. But like, man, the second you're up there and like it's starting and you're just like standing there like, oh, crap. Like, there's like, no getting out of it now. Yeah, I was like, here <laughs> we go, you know. And that was like, I mean, adrenaline just starts going and it's game well, over, dude. And with with your band too, like that's good, you know, like oh, yeah. more energy. But I can imagine if you're like doing like a poetry or something mm -hmm. and you have the energy and you're like hi everyone like even if it's like softer like calmer music yeah. i don't know how i would do it because yeah. like with our band it's like really loud and intense and uh -huh. like, so like, like you just like like yeah, get into all the of that energy you're just like oh okay. like, f it like it's actually probably good to get nervous <laughs> yeah yeah no i i didn't used to get nervous and as i've gotten older i get nervous for different things and like i gave that speech i told you get a speech this morning yeah and um and so going up to it, it sucks because you want to seem very like poised and like in control. No, I'm very I'm like mm -hmm. four score, you know. <laughs> and and when I get nervous, I get very shaky. Yeah. And my voice, it's like very shaky. <laughs> so like it actually, I I did a bunch of different things so I wouldn't be nervous and it actually worked, which was awesome. But I have definitely before been in front of people like, how is it going, guys? <laughs> I. I really try, like drop your papers everywhere. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and I hate that. Yeah, but I thought you did awesome. I seriously thought it was so cool. Um, and the venue was <laughs> friggin' gnarly too. That you were on the ground. I don't think I've ever yeah. been to something like that. Yeah, that was super fun because they have a stage. Right. So like, sometimes like I've seen them do shows there where they're up on the stage, and other times where they're on the ground. And that one. They were just like, yeah, we're going to do a floor show. And I was like, okay, cool. And it was I mean, so cool. It was my yeah. first show. I have no idea. Like, oh, yeah. Do we always do this? I was like, yeah, no, totally cool, man. I've done this. For me, I'm usually a stage guy. Normally, I'm up on the stage. <laughs> do you have my mimosas in the back? <laughs> yeah. No, I thought it was awesome. But it, it was cool. Um, I liked that a lot. I liked being on the floor, being like with people. Mm -hmm. And then I can kind of like go up to people and be in their face a little bit. Yeah. Because, like, as soon as the adrenaline starts going, like, all of a sudden, like, the nerves are gone. It's, right. it's, like, leading up to that. But as soon as I start, like, singing and as soon as we start playing and I'm moving around, it's, like, I don't see any of that. I don't feel any of that, like, pressure or anything anymore. Mm -hmm. I just feel like I can do whatever I want. It's just really weird. It's that, super weird. Like, you're actually afraid of your own mind. Yeah. You're not really afraid of the thing. Well, it's, like, I mean, think about... Back to when you used to, or when I used to, you might still like give a talk in like church or something. Mm -hmm. It was always like the first 30 seconds. It was like was walking like up freaky. is the worst part. Yeah, like, walking oh. up. Yeah. And then you're just like, oh my gosh. Or like when I gave my like mission farewell or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I go up and I'm just like, oh my gosh. Like everyone's like expecting me to be like ready for this and I'm not ready. And then you go up and you do it and as soon as you start talking and everything, the nerves kind of, like, they might still be there in the back of your mind a little bit, but, like, right. if you're just going and you're prepared for it, mm -hmm. you just go. And yeah. that, that was, like, our main thing. We wanted to make sure we were totally prepared. Right. You know, we practiced, I mean, we still practice all the time. Because we're, like, when we play a show, we don't want there to be any doubt, you know? We yeah. don't want people to see us and be, like... Oh, oof, like they could, you know, really work on this. Like, yeah. obviously there's always room for improvement, but we right. really want it to be something where they see us and they're like, hey, you guys look like you've been practicing for forever. Like is, a legit band, not just like a hobby or something. Yeah, exactly. Which is really cool because some of the bands we've played with, that's what they've said. Like the you guys? Yeah, the second show we played, like there was this band touring from like Oregon. Mm-hmm called steak sauce mustache and they're super <laughs> cool dudes and uh -huh. they play all this like really hardcore music and they put on an awesome show but they were telling us that like the guy the singer he came up to me after and he was just like what you guys are doing like you're doing it really really well That's and awesome. i am shocked that you guys have only been playing with each other for like a couple months that is so awesome and i was like oh Thank my you. gosh that's like 
such a cool thing to hear you yeah know? like really really good feedback so that is so cool no i loved it um one thing i i've always thought about i've never really been in a band and one thing i've always thought about is like the songwriting process because you said like does one person write a song and then other people bring their input is it like a big kind of salad like how does that yeah i mean so like with us um Pretty much what we do is, let's say I write a song, okay, on mm -hmm. guitar. We'll record that, and then we'll put um, just like the programmable like drums and stuff into it. And then Wolf or Marcelo, they'll write like second guitar parts to it, and we'll kind of like build the song from that. Mm -hmm. And then they'll send me the file. And then I can kind of listen to it. And when I listen to it, then I'll like write lyrics to it that way. Oh, so you start with the music and then you write the lyrics? Yeah. Always? That's what we've done so far. Yeah. Do you write all the lyrics? Yeah. Where does that come from? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, so the Holy it's Ghost. Been, it's, <laughs> it's been super fun because um, some of it comes from just like personal experiences and stuff. Mm hmm um like one of our songs it's always about an ex well duh you always gotta have song every about song's an ex. about an ex <laughs> i get knocked down <laughs> best song of all time <laughs> oh man um so that there, there's this one song and it's it's kind of about that and that one was like I know super therapeutic to write mm -hmm. and when we play it it's just like really for me it's like super emotional and it's I, I don't know it just feels really good to do yeah I tell her to just like f off <laughs> literally I say those words and <laughs> yeah. it just feels so good uh -huh. to have people like watching you do that and express it and like they might not know have any idea what I'm talking about yeah. but for me it's just it's really cool other songs um there's one song I I wrote that we recorded vocals a couple, I don't know, maybe like a month ago or something. And it's about like a, a cult leader. Okay. Who at the end of his life is regretting everything he did. Uh-huh. So it's like from a totally different perspective, which is like really weird, but... I know it was like really fun to write because I'm taking all this stuff that like I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> but like it's from what I think it would be like mm -hmm. to be that person. Yeah. Who like thought he was leading all these people on this like righteous path to like happiness and stuff. But when he's on his deathbed, he's like, now I'm stuck here remembering all the lies and like all this stuff. And everyone yeah. like led down this like totally erroneous path. I uh I heard I was like an SNL skit or something and it was saying that music is great because you get to say things that you can't say because it could be offensive but if you put it in a song yeah you can say whatever you want like you don't go around being like yeah f my ex and like, oh man this guy's just struggling hey, you need to calm dude, down you, dude. Did you have too many of those presses <laughs> and um but that's what's so great about it is it's yeah. like I hate the United States. And all of a sudden everyone's like, oh no, that's that's just a song. He's not he's, he's being not metaphorical. To, he's metaphorical. Yeah, yeah. Totally. And there was one cool song we did um that we have on this EP is uh called Kate. I don't I, I don't know if I ever told you I think I did tell you this maybe, but one of my older sisters, um, she got pregnant when she was like 19 or 20 or something and she gave up the baby for adoption okay. and she named the baby Kate and so the songs actually like in her perspective kind mm -hmm. of like giving up this child you know wanting to be a part of her life and kind of the struggle it was of being this you know mother who wanted the best for her kid but like couldn't provide it for her at that time mm -hmm. And like her life was kind of a mess at the time. So it was like really tough. And it was just this like huge, huge like struggle for her to mm -hmm. give up her daughter. And it, you know, affects her to this day. Right. You know, and um, 
so that song was, you know, really, it, I don't know. It was, it was tough to write. Yeah. And, uh, it was kind of cool after I wrote it, after we recorded it, Colin, our bassist, he, I, I told him what it was about and everything. And he was like, it, it's his fa- It was already his favorite song that we've done. Mm-hmm. And then it just became like way more. He's like, yeah, I'm, a, I'm adopted. And I had no idea. And he, oh really? Yeah. So it was like, I don't know it was, it was really cool because it kind of had like a different impact on everyone. Because we were sitting there, we had the song written and everything, and I'm trying to figure out like what the heck should I sing for this? Mm-hmm. And uh, we're sitting there, and Wolf said something. I can't remember what he said, and I just thought, because we've been sitting there for like 45 minutes, and I'm just sitting there, I totally blocked, can't think of a single thing I can write this about. Mm-hmm. and all of a sudden it just like hit me and I was like oh I know exactly what I'm gonna do and then I wrote the song in like I don't know five minutes or something all the lyrics for it and then we just like recorded it and that was it and we haven't changed it a bit and it's just been exactly that because I know there's something different about like having it be raw yeah and not like over analyzing everything and like going in and making it all so it's like perfect mm-hmm. I, we really like just the rawness of it and just keep it how it was in that initial state that you were in yeah your state of mind i really like that a lot i actually think that's way cool i've actually been trying lately because i have a problem with that like i think most people of um had taking something great thinking about it too much and then turning mm-hmm. it into something not great so i've been trying to like harness that but it's yeah it's super tough. hard it's yeah. super tough especially when you're like a perfectionist and you want everything to be like really 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 good yeah so you're like, ah, but these imperfections, like we'd record something, we'd, we'd be recording vocals and I'll be going off and doing it. And then I'm like, ah, no, 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 let's redo that. And Wolf's like, no, dude, that was so good. And I'm like, yeah, but I did this. And they're like, let's listen back to it and hear it. And like, we'll listen to it and I can hear where I messed up and like what I don't like about it. And he's like, yeah. that part that you don't like, I love that. Mm hmm. Because that like shows your like raw emotion of it or yeah, whatever. And yeah. like, at one point I'm just like, all right, screw it. I don't care. Just keep it and we'll just figure it out later. Yeah. And then like later on as I'm listening to it and everything, I like get what he's saying finally. Yeah. Because like I'm not so concerned about my mess up, you know, and then I can kind of hear it from like with like new ears and then yeah. I hear it and it's kind of a really raw, impactful thing. Uh, that's almost the exact reason why I did the podcast because I've, I listen to a lot of YouTube videos, podcasts, stuff like that. And I always got kind of bored with the ones that were too good, like too clean. Mm-hmm. And they were like, you know, like an MTV interview, like, mm-hmm. Hey, Chris Brown, like what's this, this, and this yeah. It's like coming out on October 18th, my next album. And <laughs> there were, you know, there were two, you didn't feel like you were actually talking to someone or listening to someone it felt like you were listening to a robot and so that's why i really like this kind of thing because it's intentionally like i don't really edit it informal and kind of yeah yeah. and it's it it kind of captures my goal has always been to kind of capture what people are like yeah not necessarily like have the best you know exact of you yeah like the exact word for word but yeah i like the idea of actually getting people's real interactions and stuff like that yeah so i completely understand what you're saying it's just a lot harder than it sounds to be yeah like authentic about i, it, I agree 100 percent. that's why i have those guys there because they're like the ones that are pushing me to be like no no no, no. you want to redo that and you want to like make it perfect but mm. we like the imperfection of it because it gives it more character yeah absolutely i mean maybe this is a stretch analogy but the stuff I see on social media that I'm like, oh, that's what they're really like is the stuff I actually connect with. It's never the like in front of the really obvious tourist and thing. Just, hey. Yeah, th- those are cool. And, you know, that's like marks a specific moment. But sure. I always that's why I like, you know, see someone's funny story or something like, oh, yeah. this is just where they're just being a goof and doing just, their own thing. Yeah. The funniest stuff is not super planned. And the most touching stuff is usually not super scripted either. Absolutely. That's I awesome. agree 100%. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, how do people find your band if they're looking for it? Like if they... Uh, you um, can't! Ah! <laughs> to my seven followers. <laughs> me, my mom, the five of fake accounts that I make. You, you can't find it yet. I mean, we'll have stuff out. <laughs> this year at some point yeah hopefully soon i mean if we could get it out in the next six months i'd be pumped but um our band's pinton you can still follow us on instagram instagram yeah it's on instagram yeah pinton band and uh that's where we'll tell you where our shows are and stuff so cool that's, that's about it. um i know you have to get to him, so i want to let you go but i do want to ask you one more thing uh with this whole thing doing a band, you know, mm -hmm. putting yourself out there. Like, are you scared of it? Like, is it, you know, it's really vulnerable, you know? Um, I'm not scared of that necessarily. Like, I don't know. I've always felt like I'm someone who like, as cliche as it is, like, where's my heart on my sleeve? Like, I'm very open. Mm -hmm. You've probably noticed that about me. Like, I... I don't like hide stuff too much, like super personal stuff. Like obviously I reserve for people I'm close with and right. trust, but like, I'm pretty open about how I feel. You can, if you see me, you can tell if I'm having a totally crappy day uh -huh. or if I'm in a good mood. Yeah. You know, you caught me on a good day. What can hey, I say? Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I'm not really scared of like people seeing that necessarily um what i'm scared of i guess in this whole process is more than anything is maybe just like actually getting it out you know like actually having people receive it i'm more scared of like what i mean i don't necessarily care what too many people say but like if everyone gets it and they hate it then it's oh like, yeah that like sucks yeah you know what i mean uh-huh like, obviously, there are people who will hate it and love it, but, you know, I don't know. I guess it's it's mostly just, like, getting there. That's the scariest part. Or, yeah. like, being able to continue doing it. Like, I don't look for making any money off of it or anything. Like, I don't care about that. Like, I just want to do it because it makes me happy. Because yeah. it's, like, it makes me more happy than anything else I've ever done. Yeah. So, like, that's why I like doing it. But it's, I don't know. I don't know. You're afraid, like, are you afraid of succeeding, you think? Like, if it gets out there and it's big, does that scare you at all? I mean, yeah, that would be a little scary. Just because I don't think it is warrants that but well i mean i think everyone thinks that with their own stuff like no yeah. one ever thinks their own stuff is good yeah but why like, not you know yeah i mean like yeah that'd be like freaky just because i feel like that would bring on a lot of pressure right but at the same time it'd be like so cool yeah like that's what we want you're right well yeah you know uh-huh it's like one of those weird things where it's like you want it but at the same time it's like terrifying oh that's what i think all the time about like anything i do i got like the podcast i'm always like like i do this for fun it's so much fun but like secretly if this was huge like that'd be so cool well yeah yeah totally because but that's the thing is it's like you want it to be huge but at the same time you're like if it gets huge then there's like so much more expected of me and people yeah. have like all these expectations of like what it has to be mm -hmm. when like in our band, like we don't want it to be any one thing in particular, mm -hmm. you know, like we want to have like really punky songs. We want to have like more hardcore songs. We want to have like softer songs. We want to do whatever the hell we want. Yeah. And you're not going to tell us what to do. Yeah. You know, so like, you know, it's kind of a balance. That makes sense. I mean, the fear of selling out, kind of. Yeah. Like, well, if we if we make it big, then all of a sudden we have to answer to someone else, and this is no longer our band. We just give them the middle finger. Yeah. And walk away. Just walk the freak away. That's awesome, man. Wait, I, like I said, I, I don't want to take too much of your time. This has been awesome. It has been. Uh, I was gonna say, where can people find you? They can follow you on Instagram. Yeah. You'll have something out at some point, probably this year. Yeah. Um. So you probably. We'll get probably seven followers out of it. So, <laughs> sir, put her there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>